deletion syndrome was uh, probably first identified in the 90s, um, also known as villocardiofacial or DeGeorge syndrome. And so essentially um, it took a while before scientists realized that all of these different phenotypic manifestations in terms of cardiac defects, palate abnormalities and so forth were being caused by the same genetic, uh, the same underlying genetic mutation. It's a particular uh, recurrent genetic mutation, it involves a, a deletion on the 22Q11.2 chromosomal region. It's a fairly large um, three megabase region that's typically deleted. So in about 85% of patients, they have this same three megabase deletion. A minority of patients, about 10 to 15%, have smaller atypical deletions. So the reason that I first got interested in this syndrome was because it's associated with a really high rate of uh, psychotic disorder of schizophrenia. So um, about 30% of people with the disorder will develop a psychotic disorder at some point in their lifetime, typically late adolescence or early adulthood. The reasons for this increased rate of psychosis are still not really well understood, so that's something that we're very interested in. There had been a number of single site studies, um, small studies, uh, which had identified some structural brain abnormalities, but um, in any of these one single site studies, we really don't have the power to try and understand, um, for example, whether there's an effect of deletion size on the brain phenotype or whether there are important group by age interactions or um, whether the uh, the patterns that are associated with psychosis in the context of this deletion look similar to the patterns um, in idiopathic or non-22Q schizophrenia. So these are all questions that we really couldn't answer without having this really large sample. We now have 10 sites that are participating and uh, most of them are in the United States and Europe and then we just had a, a South American site join us recently. So uh, it's a little smaller than some of the other disease working groups that are based on a clinically defined disorder, but still we have almost 500 people with the same uh, genetic mutation, which for a sample of people with all the same genetic mutation, I think is really quite amazing. One of the findings we were very excited about and uh, we were able to overlap our findings with those of the Enigma Schizophrenia Working Group and uh, that was very exciting because we see a lot of convergence in terms of the regions that are affected in psychosis in the context of the 22Q deletion and in uh, patients with idiopathic non-22Q schizophrenia. So in terms of this medial frontal temporal pattern of, of effects, uh, we see a very similar pattern in the 22Q patients that are affected with psychosis and, and that's really important because it would indicate that the kind of psychosis that these patients have is not a totally different phenomenon and that in fact how it affects the brain in a similar way. The other finding that we're very excited about is that there are effects of deletion size on brain structure and so in fact if you have the smaller 1.5 megabase deletion um, those individuals have significantly larger cortical surface area compared to the deletion patients that have the larger deletion. Um, so deletion size does seem to matter as far as its effects on brain structure. And so while we don't yet know, you know, there's something about the specific genes that are in that region um, that makes a difference, I think it's, it's important to see that there is um, an effect of deletion brain point on brain structure. We have finally locked down our data set for our cortical analyses. So we have our final set of results and uh, we are aiming to submit that manuscript in the next month. So I'm hoping by next year that'll be fully out and um, in press at least. And then, and that's for our cortical analysis. Um, that's where we've, we've uh, mostly finalize the analysis. For um, our subcortical shape analysis, um, that's work that's being done um, by Chris Ching, and those results also look very interesting where we see these um, localized patterns of increased uh, thickness and, and as well as reductions, um, these very complex patterns of shape. Lastly, uh, the diffusion tensor imaging results, uh, which uh, we're working on with Julia Villion, 
Um, those results are also looking very interesting. So one of the things that I'm hoping is that by next in the next few months, we'll be able to resolve some of these questions about whether there is increased white matter complexity in the 22Q11 patients and sort of what's accounting for these really complex patterns of um, diffusion tensor imaging differences that we see. I think some of the challenges are uh, taking data that were collected several years ago and from different scanners and so forth and identifying all the relevant um, covariates, you know, medication usage, all the historical information, just the whole range of phenotype information we want to have. So that's probably just, a, that's a, just a logistical challenge. But actually um, what's been working amazingly well is just that all of the sites have been willing and able to share their raw data with us. And so we've been able to analyze all the data together um, in the same, um, same processing pipeline, which um, you know, really allows us to have a lot more flexibility with the analysis. If anyone has uh, patients with either 22Q11 deletion, uh, that's where we have our largest sample. We're also very interested in the reciprocal 22Q11.2 duplication. So people that have the um, a gain of genomic material in, in that region, um, We've, we, so right now we're the only site that I'm aware of that has a you know, reasonable sample size of these duplication patients. They look really interesting. So if anyone has um, deletion or duplication patients, um, we would love to, um, to hear from you and please get in touch. Um, we're also interested in other CNVs and we know that um, there are other groups that have uh, uh, samples with other um, neuropsychiatric associated CNVs and so we'd love to do a, an analysis looking at the combined effects across genome-wide CNVs.